everyone, welcome back to Art Impressions Watercolor Wednesday. This is guest artist coming to you with this very cute Christmas card idea. And I am gonna show you how to stamp this little Noel um, using a wreath and then a couple of our letters from the Bible journaling letter set. So let's get going. The products I'm using for this video include the Bible Journaling um, Watercolor Serif Letter Set, and that looks like this. It comes with a whole alphabet. And then you have the these little guys from the Foliage Set 4. I'm also using this leaf or bow from Foliage Set 2 New. And I'm also using these little flowers and these little dots from the mini flower set. So let's get started. I have cut my paper um, to be about four and a half by seven. Normally I have this about six, but because we're going um, vertically and using um, quite big letters, I needed to add an inch to my watercolor paper. So just keep that in mind if you're doing a larger word for this. So I'm going to take the letter N and color this using the 565 Tombow. And I'm going to color this whole thing. And go ahead and stamp that down up at the top. Just like that. And then I'm gonna take a circle, and actually I'm using the Art Impressions um, steel die set for this. And I just grabbed one of the little circles out of here for my wreath to be able to trace it. So I'm gonna take a pencil and just very lightly trace around the inside of this die. I don't wanna add um, too dark of a line just in case um, it shows through my stamps and if it does I can always erase it and then I'm going to take my E and ink this whole thing and again these letters are going to kind of be hanging um, from the top so it doesn't need to be perfectly in line just somewhere in that relative vicinity. So I've got my E there. And then I'm going to put in my last letter, which is going to be the L. And of course, you can do all kinds of words for this. This is so much fun. Words that have an O or maybe you have a heart die. And you can do a heart in the middle, maybe love with a cute heart in the middle. Okay, so now I've got my letters in, and you know, you can always, like, if you want to be really uh, precise, you can measure out your paper and know exactly where your letters are going to go. Um, I'm going to skip that step and just kind of show you a less precise way of doing this, but you're completely welcome to do that. So now I'm going to take my little um, pine bow or leaf. A branch <laughs> and use 249 and I'm just going to start stamping into my wreath here and I like this a little bit off-centered I'm not generally someone who likes things to be perfectly the same so I do like asymmetrical placement um, but if you like it to be exactly the same, obviously move this over a little bit so that you get a nice even distribution. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and put this onto the other letters and just put a few here and there. I'm going to go and just kind of turn this. Don't be afraid to turn your paper if that's easier for you. It's easier for me because my hand doesn't go all those ways. And then I'm going to come down and just put a few on the E here. Maybe a couple inside. And then I'll angle this down and just have a few there. And then the same thing for the L. 
don't worry about this again being perfect. So much of this is just kind of what you feel like doing. You know, it's it may look different another day. And actually, I can guarantee you it will look different another day. But um, just have fun with it. Don't try to be too perfect. Um, it always looks better when you kind of let things fall where they go. Now I'm going to take my number 885 and my little dots, my little red polka dot stamp from the mini set. And I'm just going to put some of these into my wreath here, as well as my letters. So I'm starting on the N and I'm just going to stamp these in. Now, notice I'm stamping once and then several times to kind of give us that dark and light variation. I don't need a ton of that because these aren't dense um, florals and foliage. They're pretty shallow, so it doesn't have to be super dense. All right, I don't have to have a ton of dimension in this. So 8, 837 is going to be our next little flower. And actually, this is kind of that leafy looking flower from that set. So I'm going to come in and just put a couple of these. I started with the letters this time. There's no right or wrong way. Just keep in mind you want to touch what you do on one. You kind of want to do on all of them just for continuity. And I put a couple on there, so I'm going to move on to these. And don't be afraid to kind of reorient your stamp as well, just so that it looks different every time you stamp it. And I'll kind of maybe come up here with a little bit of these. And then come in to my N and just stamp these in. These, this is such a, just like the joy from last week, this is another really good assembly line project you can do for your Christmas cards. When we're coming up with these projects, we often think of that. We often think how, you know, is this a project that someone can do, you know, several of at one time? And um, this is one of those. So we definitely, Think about that because we know a lot of you make your own Christmas cards. Yay! We love that. It's such a nice touch to the holiday um, to get a handmade card as opposed to one, which, you know, there are a lot of really cute ones in the stores too, but there's something really special about um, getting a handmade card, you know, that just says, I thought of you and I spent time and you were special and I wanted to do this for you. Okay, so I'm taking that really teeny tiny flower and just kind of moving this around. And actually this kind of, this flower kind of looks like a leaf, but I use it as a flower or a leaf. Um, it, it really doesn't matter. A lot of these tiny little elements have, you know, a lot of versatility you can do. Okay, so I'm gonna take this cute little branch here and I'm going to use the number 177 and just change up the green a little bit. So I'm going to ink that and just go around this circle that I made with the um, little circle die. And don't worry if it comes out like that because you can always come back in and just put more around. Sometimes that edge just kind of catches you. And um, that's when you decide, well, I'm going to have a little bit thicker <laughs> wreath, and that's completely fine. Sometimes that happens. It's no big deal. You know, I've been doing this long enough to kind of work with it when stuff like that happens that's kind of out of plan. You're like, well, that wasn't what I was planning, but here we go. And it doesn't matter. You know, everything is going to be looking a little bit different every time you do it. And you can always just put more in than you planned and it will just come right together. Okay, now I'm going to take my brush and add my water to all of my really fun little elements. So I'm going to take my water and do all of my greens first. So I'm going to come in and just dab around the greenery. And I want to make sure to dab 
because if I'm using a straight stroke on this greenery, I'm gonna end up getting um, a lot of image loss. So you really wanna focus on just dabbing these areas, just kind of allowing the color to move without going back and forth over it. So now I'm moving on to another letter and just touching the green. I just wanna to touch the green parts. I'm not onto the red or the purples yet. And the reason I do this is to keep the colors separate. I want color differentiation and this is very helpful in doing that. So now I'm gonna go for the reds. And of course, when you're doing this, you're going to catch some of the other colors. I mean, they're really close together. So, you know, the likelihood of you avoiding all the other colors is very small. So don't overthink it, don't worry about it. If that ends up happening, it's going to mix a little bit and that's fine. That's totally okay. But for the most part, just do your best to kind of keep the colors separate. Now I'm going in for the purple and I just, I love using purple for Christmas time too because um, purple is a the color of royalty. You know, it's a really rich color. Um, and you know, it is, it is an off, often used color for holidays. So I'm just going to finish that up and then I'm going to take my brush and begin to pull out a little bit of this color in the letters and you can see that blue really come out nicely and I'm just going to pull this out a little bit I don't need to cover the entire letter I am going to come back in though and add a bit of a shadow or a, sh a little bit of a shading um, just to accent the shape of the letter and make them sort of um, pop out a little bit more so I'm going to start with that and then I am going to begin to put my color on the outside of the letters. And I'm gonna use my palette for that. And I'm gonna use number 177 green, as well as the 565 blue. And I'm just going to go through first with the green and just add a little bit outside of the letter. And it's just going to be a touch. Now, if you feel like it's too dark, like I just put this piece down and was like, oh, that's a little bit dark. I'm gonna come in with just pure water and actually I'll do that a lot. So I'll drop in some color and then come back in with pure water. So I'll drop in, let's start, um, let's do a little bit more down in here. So I'll drop in some color and then I'll come in with pure water and just push that out a teeny bit just to distribute that a little bit better. So I'll come in with my color and then push it out with the water. And this is, I kind of get in a rhythm once you start doing this, you, you kind of start you know, putting the color down and then just grabbing the water and pushing the color out and the nice thing about that is you're not distributing more and more and more color when you do that. You're just moving the existing color around to be a little bit more even. So I'm gonna push this up and move my color down like that. And then I can come back in if I feel like, well, I want like a little bit here or you know elsewhere, I can do that. So then with the blue, I'm just going to add in the blue kind of wherever I feel like. I may or may not connect it to that green, but I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So put a little bit of color down and then move it out with the water. So I'll take a little bit of this blue and put it on and then move the color out with the water. And if I feel like I have too much color, well then, or water, well then I'll wipe a little bit off and then move to the next piece. So I'm gonna take a little bit of blue and just kind of put it in here, follow it with a little bit of water and move the color around. And we're just gonna work down onto all of these letters. And this is just a really nice little backdrop for the word. 
Um, you know, it's up to you. If you did this in like all like golds and reds and those really beautiful, you know, emerald greens for Christmas, you could do like the background, like a gold or, you know, a really beautiful like bronze or something like that. So I'm just kind of keeping it lighter, but it's, it's completely up to you how you want to do your background. Um, but you could make this really, really rich just depending on the background color that you use. So this look can be completely different. I mean, you could emboss the letters in like a really beautiful bronze and then come back in with your reds and greens and just beautiful um, Christmassy, like maybe some glitter or something like that. Just go all out. Like this is, this is Christmas time, you know, it's holidays. It's, it's, it's all about the glitzy, you know, and obviously togetherness, um, you know, relationships and all that good stuff. But it is kind of a fun time to allow yourself to be creative using a lot of glitters and sparklies and, you know, things like that. So now that we have our background in, I am going to now connect these words. And a really easy way to do this is to use a ruler so that you sort of have a good idea about it being a, like, you know, so that you have a straight line, essentially. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but you can do a really light, very, very light um, guide just to kind of help you know where to hang this thing. And, you know, just, it, it's more important to have the string be straight than it is to have the letters be perfectly over um, top of each other. So I'm gonna take the Twin Tone Tombow in the brown, and I'm going to begin by kind of wrapping the string around and then moving up. So I'm gonna wrap this around and move it up, and then um, I'll move this up and then wrap a couple around here. And actually this has to be connected. <laughs> So we're going to wrap a couple here and maybe we'll wrap a little bit on this edge as well. Okay, so you've got your tied strings and you just kind of want to follow it up. And then you're going to have this string coming up here. And then this is going to obviously wrap around the end just like so. And that's going to wrap nice and tight. And then using your ruler once again, where did I put my little ruler? Oh, there it is, it's hiding. So I'm gonna use my ruler again, make sure I'm nice and straight, and then just push it up to the top. So that is the project. Of course, if you wanna put like our cute little stipples in, you can do that. You know, there's all kinds of ideas that you can do for this project. Um, if you liked this, give it a thumbs up. I always appreciate that. Um, if you think of something else you wanna see, comment below and we can put something together. Um, you know, this channel is about you guys and we want to do things that interest you. So if you have an idea on your mind, we would love to hear that. Uh, definitely check us out on Instagram, um, Facebook, Check out Bonnie Krebs Bible Journaling if you love the Bible journaling. Um, these words are from that series, so definitely go check her out. Give her a follow. Um, say hi below. I absolutely love you guys, and I love hearing um, all the good things you're doing. And then, of course, don't forget to sign your work. I almost forgot. So take care, everybody. I will see you next time, and happy stamping. Bye.